Good morning. Today's been really a wonderful day. I know it's cloudy out right now, but earlier the sun was shining and the temperatures have been in the 60s. It's really very uncharacteristic of a November day, but we know that in just a few weeks, it's going to turn and it's going to become cold um, and we'll settle in for the winter months. But also, in a few weeks, it'll be time to celebrate Christmas. And Christmas is always just a wonderful time of the year, isn't it? You know, I remember as a kid, I loved Christmas. I counted the days after Thanksgiving, and I got to confess, I was just looking forward to the gifts that I would be given. But as I've gotten older, that has changed for me. I'm not really thinking of gifts anymore, but I'm thinking of spending time with family. And I've also enjoyed the traditions. So in the month of December for my devotionals, I would like to share something that we consider tradition, and that is Christmas carols. And so each week I'm going to share the history of one song, one Christmas carol, and then make some observations from each one of these songs. And so today I would like to start with what many consider to be the greatest Christmas carol, and that is Silent Night. Now there is a great story behind this wonderful song. Actually, this was written by a guy named Joseph Moore. And Joseph Moore was born in 1792 in Salzburg, Austria. He was born to a mother who had three sons, and his father was a mercenary soldier. But after the third son was born, uh, Joseph's father abandoned the family and took off, and it left them in deep poverty. Now, before I forget, another tidbit to know is that one of uh, Joseph's grandfathers was actually the town executioner. So the Moors were really not too favorable in the Salzburg town. Well, uh, Joseph's family just, it was a fight every day to put food on the table. And so a local priest took pity on Joseph and decided to take him in as a foster child. Of course, I'm sure that his mother had to agree to that. And being under the household of this priest, it was discovered that he had a gift for music. And so this priest helped cultiv cultivate Joseph's gift. And I'm sure he was given many opportunities to share his gift in church. Also, during his teen years, he desired to become a priest. And in 1815, he was ordained as a priest. He took his first parish in a town called Orbendorf, Austria, and it was there that he met a guy named Franz Gruber, who was not just a school teacher, but he was also the church's organist. Now, Gruber also had grown up in poverty, and so these two, Moore and Gruber, became the best of friends immediately. In 1818, as they were planning out the Christmas Eve service uh, to be held at midnight, they decided to do something different, and they wanted to introduce the congregation to a new song. And so, Moore wrote the lyrics, and Gruber came up with the music. They combined their efforts, and Silent Night was birthed. It was played on at midnight there, um, Christmas Eve, with Gruber playing the guitar and a backing choir. Eventually, the song came to America very, via a hymnal, and it exploded in popularity. And as we think about Silent Night, uh, I, I just think about those lyrics, and they're awesome, aren't they? And in the first verse, we find Mary and Joseph uh, in a cattle barn, in a livestock barn, and Jesus has been born. I mean, this is the less, a less than ideal set of circumstances, 
but it's here that Jesus is born. And it's not struggle that they're thinking of. It's peace. It's peace that surrounds them with baby Jesus. In the second verse, we find that the shepherds, the local shepherds that had been tending their flocks out at night, they witness the skies opening, the heavens being visible, and a thousand angels singing praises of the Christ child being born. Having witnessed this, they scurry on to the manger scene and they become the first worshipers of the Christ child. And I'm sure that they are thinking, this is the one that will save us from despair. And of course, in the third verse, we find that Jesus is no ordinary child. He is the most extraordinary child that has ever been born. Because it is deity that runs through his veins. And God shines his glory down upon his son. You know, the thing I like most about this song is that we have a teenage couple that are deep in poverty. They're stuck in this barn. But see, it is not uh, despair that has overcome them. It's peace, as we said before. And the first worshipers are considered... The lowest profession in all of Israel, they are just a step above slaves. But see, with these people, God is sending the message that you are good enough to come worship my son. And see, we know later that Jesus will go to the cross and he will fulfill God's redemptive plan. And see, all of us can come to Jesus. We can have our sins forgiven and we can have salvation and eternal life through him. You know, I wonder if Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber were thinking of this as they put this song together. You know, as we think about our lives today, 2022 has not been the easiest of years. We still have this remnant of COVID going around. And it's just annoying. I had covid here a couple of months ago. It still seems to be lingering. But we also have seen a bit of an economic collapse. We've seen inflation rise extraordinarily. We've seen prices go up. It annoys me to be paying four fifteen for gas right now. I just see money going out. But I know that it has placed people in hardship. It has been a challenge. And you know, maybe that is you today. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe, you know, financially, it's really been hard. And maybe you're struggling, you know, kind of like Mary and Joseph in that livestock barn. But see, here's the message. Peace can still surround us. Because God is a God of peace. And we find peace in his son. And so I trust that this Christmas, it will be a time of great peace. Well, God bless you. Merry Christmas and have a great day. Round yon virgin